Every day I know that we lose uh, folks to cancer, but just in the last week, Sunday, we lost a six-year-old, Amanda Conroe, uh, Sherry DeMonte, a 36-year-old mom, right. recently right. passed away, and I think it's our community just said, oh, we need a cure for this. Right. Uh, Dr. Michael King was a uh, professor at Cornell uh, here with us a year ago, talking about your research, which sounded so promising. You're here with an update for us this morning. Yes, thank you. Um, so a year ago, I, I came on the show and told you about our new uh, uh, technology we just published uh, where we can put nanoparticles into the bloodstream and they will kill all of the tumor cells uh, flowing around in the blood uh, within a couple hours. And this uh, we intend as a way to prevent the spread of cancer through the body. It's more targeted, right, in That's terms right. of versus doing radiation yeah. therapy, which sort of kills everything. It's one of the first um, attempts to try to directly target tumor cells in the blood. And um, what we've been working on for the past year is now um, a more realistic model where we tried to answer the question, could this therapy be used to prevent the spread of cancer, for instance, in a mouse that already has cancer? Okay. See, that's the situation that one would find uh, when treating a human patient. And so we were working with mice that develop prostate cancer uh, in their prostate. And then over the course of several weeks, it starts to spread to the lungs, liver, kidneys, uh, spleen. And so in week three, we started injecting our nanoparticles. And at the end of the study, about week nine or so, we um, examined the mice. And the treated mice had no tumors in any of the other organs. And actually, um, it, the, the uh, uh, nanoparticles caused the original tumor to shrink in size to almost nothing. Wow. Which actually surprised us quite a bit. And so that study is just wrapping up now, and we're very excited because now, for the first time, we have uh, a way to uh, hopefully uh, prevent the spread of prostate cancer, and we're, we feel like we're getting very close to something that could be eventually tested in humans. It's amazing. So you're, go ahead. I was just going to ask you, what do you think that time frame would be? Um, well, it depends a lot on funding, right. which, which so. sort of fuels the research and allows mm -hmm. us to hire people and um, do the necessary experiments. Um, but um, we feel like we're maybe a couple years away from applying for approval to test in humans. How deadly a cancer is prostate cancer? Um, it kills uh, thousands of men uh, in the U.S. every year. Mm -hmm. um, it's when the, the problem when it's caught early, oftentimes it can be treated, but um, certain types of prostate cancer that don't respond to therapy, right. there's really no uh, suitable treatment options. Right, so you want to catch it early and to give the patient the best chance for survival. Yes, and if it does progress to a state that is um, uh, prone to spread throughout the body, we believe that we have a Wow. a way that will eventually um, uh, hopefully benefit patients. A new tool in your toolbox. What's next? What's on the horizon? We've got about 30 seconds left. What's okay. next on the horizon for your real um, exciting stuff? Well, we want to test um, the safety in, in, in larger animals, which would be necessary to, to eventually go to humans. Mm -hmm. And we're also, we've started a trial to test the therapy in breast cancer as well. Oh, oh. wow. Okay. Professor Michael yeah. King at Cornell, if you want to Google it, learn more, because I know a lot of people are saying, I want to invest in that. I want to know more. I don't want yeah. more people to have to go through what uh, some loved ones have gone through recently. Thanks so much. Thank Good you luck. so much, Doctor. We appreciate it.